this one! Do it! Do it! Greetings, fellow Earthlings, and welcome to this tiny garage. Now, after last week's shenanigans, many of you recommended that I join a car club. So I did. I joined the Porsche Club of America, or the PCA, to the cool kids. And already they've sent me all this swag. I've got a metal name tag and discount cards and the Panorama magazine. But in addition to that, I've got at least a half dozen invitations to fun car orientated events in the local area. Like the one this morning, which is a PCA organized convoy cruise to the Orange County Cars and Coffee. Now we're going to start there and then we're going to see how much we can learn about the local car show scene. I know already I've learned that car shows are early. And we're off. Any of you that are just joining us, welcome. Please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. This whole project started when I bought this car pre-broken on Craigslist. I'm not a mechanic, but with all of your help, I was able to fix it. And so now we have the problem of what to do with it. I really was not expecting to succeed in getting this uh, car on, back on the road again. And so thank you very much, everybody. Um, and then also your ideas on joining the Porsche Club of America uh, immediately gave me some other thoughts on what to do. And of course, our shenanigans last week uh, was fun. <laughs> I still couldn't get the thing to spin out. And so I'd say the takeaway from that is these cars are nowhere near as tail heavy as perhaps the older ones were. Some of you were saying that Porsche actually engineer understeer into these cars from the factory, which is very interesting. I'd love to know how they do that. Other things that you guys were saying that I'd never heard of before was trail braking, which is an advanced driving technique where you hold into the brakes on purpose into a corner to shift the weight forward and give you the opportunity for the rear end to kick out for fun. Another thing you guys had mentioned which I'd heard of before was the Scandinavian flick, but now that actually seems relevant that I should try it. And that, in general, there's more to it than this, but you kind of turn the opposite way from the turn and then sharply turn back again, also to make the rear end flick out. And so this is very interesting stuff. I do appreciate all of your input, and we're gonna to try to have some of those um, skills demonstrated on the channel, if I can find a safe place, and probably a professional to show me how to do it. Anyway, we're off to our first place. The Orange County Cars and Coffee. And I guess I'm a little early, it's like 6.15. I was afraid of being late and I'm, I mean, either I'm in the wrong place or I'm the first one here. As it turns out, I'm not completely flipping crazy. Other people are here now, finally. The kind people at that tiny desk gave me this wristband and a map on how to get to the Orange County Cars and Coffee. Really, we just go north and turn left. The end result was around 40 cars in the convoy, mostly 911s, as you can see here. Let's have a listen in to our driver's meeting before we hit the road. Uh, he is going to slow everybody down. It's going to take every ounce of your body to not hit the gas and blow past them. The reason why we do that is because we want to keep a line of cars so that Basically, it's a spectacle going down the freeway. If everybody takes off, then really there's no point of having done this. And then it's just five Porsches here, one there, two there, one there, three there. It doesn't look like anything. Last time we had a line of 48 cars, if I remember correctly, so it was nice. You can go two lanes if you need to. One lane, doesn't matter. I'm gonna take the caboose, make sure everybody gets out. <coughs> Once I get on the freeway, I'm gonna skirt up to the front so I can check in with my contact and then we will all get in ahead of time before the general public. Public gets in at nine, we'll get in at eight. We can all then park together. Here we are leaving eventually. I guess everyone just has to be very nice and polite to each other. Or not. 
The main takeaway from that driver's meeting is they want us all to stay in a line so that we look cool. Well, certainly that 993 target in front of me is very cool, so I'm just going to try to keep up. Officially, this was the San Onofre nuclear power plant, but locally we have a different name for them. Everywhere I look, something reminds me of her. Soon after that, we arrive at our glamorous location, the Outlet Mall at San Clemente. No revving, no speeding, no burnouts. I wish. There really wasn't any space for anything like that, and everyone really was pretty well behaved, all things considered. That is an Eleanor from the movie Gone in 60 Seconds. And it turns out our destination is yet another mall car park next to a Starbucks. Which is our exclusive Porsche-only parking location. Very posh indeed. So here we are. We've been here for a while just doing absolutely nothing. There's Stacy and Piper and Cassie and the dogs. That don't seem very happy. And we're actually here before the Lambo people. All right. And the Ferrari people mostly. So there's a juicy looking, oh, F40 over there. All right, we're going over there. Here's the Spartan interior of that F40 with the key left tantalizingly in the ignition the whole time. That blue license plate and that blue smoke got me wondering why is this Ferrari registered 1500 miles away in Montana? Well, it turns out that Montana is one of five American states where you don't pay sales tax on your car purchase and the car doesn't have to pass emissions. My excitement at finding this very shiny DeLorean was soon quenched with the gut-wrenching realization that it could never do 88 miles an hour. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious... The Speedo has a peg at 85. Come on now. Of course, there was plenty of Lamborghinis and Ferraris to drool over. And this McLaren 600 LT all off by itself, kind of like the one we looked at at Matt Farah's place, but with that enchanting hoof scoop. <laughs> Our little Carrera has never been this clean in the entire time I've owned it. It has been fun hanging out with everybody and looking at all the cool cars, but it's time to move on. All right, back on the road. So the South Orange County Cars and Coffee that we just went to is California's largest weekly car show. The next one we're going to in Escondido is not the biggest car show in California, but it certainly comes highly recommended. Um, one thing about these Porsches that I didn't realize uh, is that uh, the temperature gauge moves. Uh, what I mean by that is any car I've owned up to now, as long as everything's working okay, the temperature gauge just goes up to, you know, the middle, and then it kind of stays there. Uh, but Porsches, 911s, I know now, apparently it's normal. When you get in traffic, they will get hot. It's not that they will overheat. It's just in their nature to get hot if they're sitting. And uh, so it's a little disconcerting and something that I'm trying to get used to. Uh, let me know in the comments, any of you that have uh, 996s and 997s for that matter, um, what you find temperature wise. Like right now I'm at 180 and it's often like right in the middle there. But if I get into traffic, it will start creeping up and we have some traffic up ahead. Rather than worry about almost overheating in this almost traffic jam, I decided to pull over and enjoy the view. I spent some time hanging out with the ground squirrels and the sky rats and the tourists, enjoying the view and avoiding that traffic. Our next stop is in Escondido, which is about 20 miles inland. It gets a lot hotter here. This is just in a car park of a communal park. That's all the cool people there that sit in that circle, the organizers and such. And then when you arrive, you can just drive down here if you feel like, and then pick a place to park. And people often park, you know, next to cars that are like themselves. The Impala people like to park together. The Chevy Camaro people like to park together. You know what I mean? But there's a good selection here. That's like a Lotus 7 or a Caterham there. 
and uh, some Japanese cars, lots of Americana, of course, a new uh, M4 right there. Oh, and a Supra. Look at that. I decided I would get between this Mustang and this Camaro here. And then you just walk around and around and around. And if you're lucky, which is one thing I really enjoy, is someone who will tell you something cool about their car, like Alex and his Tesla. Howdy, uh, this is my 2015 Tesla Model S 70D. And as you can see by the little badge there, I've got over 400,000 miles on this car. In fact, it's uh, got almost 436,000 on it as of right now. And uh, yeah, it's been a, been a pretty fantastic car. I purchased it used from the original owner uh, with a little over 400,000 miles on it, and I've had it for about two years now. What was the original owner doing that he put all that mileage on it? So the original owner uh, used it to do Uber full-time, and he did an average of about 80,000 miles a year doing that. Um, and yeah, he, he really got his money's worth out of, out of all that. The car, of course, has the, the grandfathered in free unlimited supercharging, and so it worked, worked out great for him doing that kind of thing with it. Is it still on the original battery? So the, the battery was replaced once under warranty at about 250,000 miles. Uh, it's also had the, the front drive unit replaced, and that was probably somewhere around 375,000 miles. So does it have much charge left on the battery that's in there? So as of right now, the current battery has somewhere around 185,000 miles on it, and it still retains about 87% of its original capacity compared to new. The, the bottom cushion on the driver's seat, I actually did replace shortly after I bought the car. Uh, the original one didn't have any tears or anything in it, but the foam was pretty worn out. So I, I went ahead and replaced just the bottom cushion. So what made you buy this particular car? So I actually, uh, I actually repair a lot of Tesla powered cars for a living. And I've kind of learned over time which kind of drivetrain configurations are more reliable than others. And this particular setup of car, which is a, it's a, it's a dual motor all-wheel drive, uh, non-performance, um, these drivetrains tend to be pretty bulletproof compared to some of the other drivetrains in the, the rear-wheel drive and the performance cars. Uh, the rear motor used in those cars tends to have some issues. So. so when it comes time to replace that battery out of warranty, what are you going to do? Um, so the, the, the car's actually still under the, the powertrain warranty, which covers the, the battery and the drive units uh, until July of next year. Um, after that point, I might consider um, potentially replacing the battery with a, with a bigger battery, uh, kind of do an upgrade on it. And uh, yeah, that's kind of you know what I'd like to do with it. In terms of cost, you know the the battery itself would be pretty expensive to, to get a hold of. Um, I can probably get a, a used 90 kilowatt hour battery for somewhere between 15 and 20 thousand. Um, but once I do that, I can either sell the old battery as a whole or part it out individually. And I think if I do that, I can probably come pretty close to a break even. Well, Alex, thank you very much for sharing your high mileage Tesla with us. Absolutely. I'm a big fan of the 60s era C2 Corvettes. This one is a stick shift, which makes it even more awesome. Low riders are very popular in these parts. Even miniature ones. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drippy, yeah, I fit it up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Mm. Secure the back, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I ain't never scared like bone crush. Boy, I got God, don't fear none. My line busy, take no calls. Feels like... Escondido is a relatively small town located between the beaches and the mountains. Where we're going now is right down by the Mexican border in the metropolis that we call San Diego. On our way to the big city, we stopped off at the Torrey Pines Glider Port. It's not a bad place to spend some time. Kind of picturesque you, as you'd imagine. There's an example of one of those people that survived. It does look idyllic sailing over the Pacific. 
Presumably he made it back. But really, it's a funny place to have lunch because it's a spectator sport and you can see the vast majority of people that don't make it. Like this guy. Look. Oh, oh, no. Oh, he. No. Thankfully, this young Swedish lady paid this local man to jump off a cliff with her. I think that helicopter in the background is looking for the last Swedish lady. I think this one made it. Fingers crossed. Now we made it to the big bad city, the La Mesa Chamber of Commerce car show in another mall car park. If names like Dodge Challenger, Chevy Impala and Plymouth Roadrunner get your heart racing, then shows like this are a great opportunity to see all of those icons in one place. The Porsche certainly did not fit in at this particular show, but someone who did make us feel welcome was Mel Hawkinson with the East County Cruisers, and he was kind enough to tell us about his Camaro. Okay, this car was originally purchased sight unseen. It was uh, about $10,000 when I picked it up. The car is uh, what we call a California car. It had a little bit of rust on it and stuff like that, but we went ahead and took it to a restoration shop, had all the new body panels put on it. So the work you see right here is about $40,000 worth of work, but it's back to the original. Uh, we were trying to make a Z28 clone car, but we decided not to. We just went with the effects, the spoilers, the black wheels, and the black back end, new interior. It has the original equipment in it from the factory, so it's a numbers matching car has uh, the actual factory smog on it from back then. So, but there it is in all its glory. Better than new from what the guys that put it back together for me. Oh, yeah. They said it's better than showroom. So it's a fun car to drive. And uh, I just wish there were more of these on the road. I just love this body style and there it is. If Mel's Camaro is restored to showroom condition, this 69 Mustang would have looked like it was from the future back then, with a modern 5.0 V8 shoehorned in there, and an interior that looks nicer than any Mustang ever dreamed of looking. This hot rod used to look more like this 1932 Ford Model B. I always used to wonder why you see so many of these 1932 or Little Deuce coupes turned into hot rods. And I know now it's because 1932 was the same year that Ford introduced the cheap V8 that happened to fit into these cars very nicely, thank you very much. This one on the other hand is totally crazy with those velocity stack intakes on the carburetors, chrome everywhere. And then they went to a lot of trouble for that huge gear shifter. Why? What, what does that do? Well, that was a relatively small show in the big city. And now we're on our way to the country, to the Rancho Santa Fe Cars and Coffee. Now, Rancho Santa Fe is a great place if you want to live with your horse. So I suspect they have some nice cars. So Rancho Santa Fe Cars and Coffee takes place on the streets of this small village. That's the coffee shop over there. Good luck getting coffee. And a good selection of cars, I would say, Many, many Porsches. We did get that Dodge Charger there, which is kind of cool. But you'll see here, yes, there's Ferraris and Lamborghinis, Land Rovers, but pajillions of Porsche. Oh my gosh, it's almost embarrassing. I managed to park in front of this late 60s 911 in classic silver and black, kind of like mine. But you can see how huge the 996 looks by comparison. Can you name this Ferrari in eight seconds or less? The pop quiz continues, Folkadoodles. Tell me in the comments, is this a real Shelby Cobra? So 
But should you join a club like the Porsche Club of America? Well, I think that for less than $50 a year, it's a great way to fill your inbox and your weekends with fun car oriented activities. It was also an introduction to the local car show scene, which if you like chatting about cars, it's a fun excuse to wash your car and get up early on the weekend. Unfortunately though, that's all we have time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time.